recording. And so today is lecture 12 and I will discuss boundary Morse theory, embedded Morse theory and some relations between the two. Uh, trying at least to convince you that there is something like uh, uh, rising water principle. I will come back to that in a moment. So recall that if f from m to r and m, the m is a compact manifold, then f is a Morse function. If F has only Morse critical points, and uh, if F restricted to the boundary is Morse. Uh, uh, an exercise for, for the classes uh, that just came, uh, came to my mind is Find an example when the second condition is, uh, sorry, is violated. All right, so F is Morse function and Xi is a gradient like vector field for F if, well, dx psi f greater zero, and with standard and uh, obvious uh, condition that with equality only at the critical points of f. And the second is that psi is everywhere tangent to the boundary. That was the subject of the previous, previous lecture. And we considered two types of critical points on the boundary. Mm, this should be a different color. Uh, with, uh, sorry, wrong picture. This was the uh, wanted it to be the same behavior on the boundary. This is called boundary stable, and this is boundary unstable. And we were discussing what is the effect of crossing boundary stable and boundary unstable critical point. You see that the topology of level sets of the function doesn't change when we cross a boundary stable critical point, but it does change when we cross the boundary unstable critical point. So just to and we showed a theorem, well, we didn't show it. We won't show it, but theorem, it's section three of mm, Borodzik Nemeti Ranitsky AGT paper. Uh, if Z is a critical point of f of index k and k and z is in the interior of m and there exists gamma a path in the level set of Z such that gamma connects 
z to the boundary. Then, well, then what we can do, we can move the critical point. Mm. We can move z to the boundary. So the picture, let me recall you, we have But everything is wrong, sorry. Yeah. Mm. What's I'm drawing? Uh, one second. And here it should be uh, like this. Yes, okay. So we can move the critical point to the boundary, and what are the indices? In that, maybe I can correct this picture a little bit now so that it looks more like the two others. Uh, so this is the... So what are the indices? Well, if we see the picture, we can guess the indices. So here the Z has index one on this picture. Here there is no good notion of an index and here the index is... Uh, well, what is the index of a boundary critical point? The index is, well, let's say the index is the dimension of the stable manifold on M. So we have like two different uh, no possibilities of defining what, a, what an index is in the, in the boundary situation, where we can look only at the boundary or we can look at the bound on the on the manifold so the index of this critical point on the boundary is one because the stable and the index of this critical point on the ambient manifold is also one because it's one one because the so here the index is one and there is no ambiguity but for this critical point the index is uh, not necessarily one well it's one if you look at, the, at this critical point and the critical point on the manifold M. And that is what we define. But if you, if you tell me that this index is zero because you look only at the boundary, then it's also a correct answer. It's not, uh, it's not an answer you would, uh, well, it's not the answer we chose in the, in the paper, but it's a, it's a, it's a, another possibility. Mm. So with this 
convention that this is the, the index of this critical point is one, the index of the two critical points is of the new critical points, uh, critical points are one, and there is a single trajectory from the boundary uh, stable to the boundary unstable critical point. So here is this, this trajectory. So basically the theorem that we prove that we proved is what you see on this picture is, is true. What is what you see in this picture is reality that occurs in many in all dimensions, and the, the picture is not doesn't lead you astray. So uh, why there is one trajectory? Well, forget about the manifold, look at the boundary only. Here you have a situation that you have no critical points. And now you introduce a pair by looking at what's happening on the boundary. You what is what's happening? You introduce a canceling. You, you introduce a canceling pair of critical points on the boundary. One has index zero, one has index one, and there is one precisely one trajectory that cancels this critical point. But you can cancel these critical points. Um, you can cancel these critical points only on the boundary, but you cannot cancel these critical points on the manifold M because one is boundary stable and the other is boundary unstable. So there is an obstruction for cancellation in that, uh, uh, in this uh, situation. Mm -hmm. So uh, here we cannot cancel crits. Well, let me call this one Z, S, C, O, and C, O on the boundary. So there is a, there is a like, project, study homologically, cancellation for I mean homologically, I mean uh, describe precisely what the weak matrix is, uh, what are the conditions and obstructions for cancellation coming from the weak matrix. Uh, some part of it is done in the, in the paper, some part of it is waiting for someone willing to write down a rigorous, uh, a systematic treatment of this cancellation problem. Uh, this might be quite uh, interesting for for the future. All right, so that's uh, like essentially uh, recalling what what happened last uh, uh, last week. And let me give you an example, a detailed example of uh, crossing on what ha what's happening when you consider. Uh, let me consider the four-dimensional manifold X and we have boundary of X is M and team M is free. So here is why is it an important example? Well, generalized Schoenfleece problem. Suppose S3 embeds in D4, then, uh, sorry, well, S3 embeds in S4, then S3 is isotopic smoothly isotopic to the equatorial embedding. So equatorial embedding means you have a sphere 
and the condimension one sphere is embedded as an equator. And isotopic means that you can find H, H of S3, and then you can find family HT, such that HT is H0 is equal to H, and H1 is uh, equatorial embedding. And HT is an embedding for all T. So in zero one. So why is it three and four relevant? Well, all the other prob all the other cases were answered affirmatively. Uh, and moreover, I far as far as I remember, the case where its topological embedding is also solved. So this is the, the last remaining the, uh, the last remaining problem. It's a little bit. Uh, it's related to the um, to Poincaré conjecture, like smooth Poincaré uh, um, smooth Poincaré uh, conjecture implies generalized surface, but not uh, not the opposite. Not the opposite. Uh, well, we will not solve. We are unable to solve this problem, but for the moment. But I will tell you what is the what does the Morse theory for the manifold with boundary tell you? So S three, you choose an embedding S three to S four. You call the image of S three M, and well, this mm, this embedding splits into two uh, open. Uh, splits S4 into two manifolds, you strive to prove that both of these manifolds are balls. So one of these manifolds you denote by X and the boundary of X is M. So now that was the introduction. So what's happening if you consider a Morse function F from X to let's say zero one and we move all Mm. critical points of index one, two, three. to the boundary. So what kind of critical points can we have? And then we rearrange and we rearrange. I will come back to rearrangement theorem later because it's uh, uh, it's uh, a little bit boring. Uh, so you see, uh, rearrangement boils down to the general statement that I told you, and I told you that's a template, and that's what we are using all the time. Uh, namely, uh, if you have, you look at the more smale condition, which is easy to verify, and then you look at the stable and unstable manifolds. If they don't intersect, you can rearrange, and the dimensional counting argument tells you when, when you can rearrange or where, where you can't rearrange. And uh, mm, here the problem is that you can not rearrange uh, stable critical points above the unstable critical points of the same index. That's the only thing that you need to remember. And uh, it's, uh, it's again this picture that tells you this. You have a single trajectory from a stable manifold to the unstable manifold of the same index so you cannot move the this critical point above that critical point because it's uh, well there is a trajectory and the the flow is more small so that's essentially what you need to know about rearrangement and let me pass to the to the study so we have we have the following types of critical points. Well, first we have zero E, zero I. So it's interior critical point of index zero. So M 
I will denote by n in the following, I will denote by C the level set, critical, or maybe I should write it down somewhere. C the critical level set, uh, M equal and F M minus and plus and X minus X plus are level sets below mm, and above the critical point, the critical level set. So X minus is equal X intersected with F inverse of C minus epsilon, where epsilon is very small, etc. All right, so far so good. Interior critical point means we have, well, the boundary of M, the M doesn't change, so M doesn't change. X plus is equal to X minus plus. What is happening, you create a four dimensional, uh, sorry, uh, X is the level set, so X is a three dimensional sphere, okay? So that's what's happening when you cross. So now there is the zero unstable critical point. Are there stable critical points of index zero? Can you have stable critical points of index zero? That's a question to you. So my, my, my intuition is you, you cannot? Well, yeah, that's an educated guess by uh, studying uh, psychology or headology on the uh, on the um, um, uh, 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 on the lecturer and the answer and uh, yes you're right and the answer is on this picture so now look at this picture and don't use headology but use mathematics All right, what is the index of a critical point? Is it's the, the, the no, no, number of positive components in the, uh, the derivative minus number of negative components? No, 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 no. The index is the dimension of the, the, the number of the number of negative components, or put more geometrically, the dimension of the boundary okay. dimension of the stable manifold. Okay. Oh, okay. So, so, so if 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 you, if it's point of index zero, so it's it has a st stable manifold manifold of, of dimension zero. Yeah. So it cannot have yeah. so a stable manifold. So you have if if the index is zero, then the stable manifold must be empty. But if a critical point is boundary stable, then you have one dimension of boundary stable of the stable manifold which is corresponds to that trajectory. So this is gives you one, um, um, one dimensional stable manifold. Therefore, you cannot have, you cannot possibly have a, an index zero stable critical point, as well as you can't have uh, the index um, one critical point, uh, the index, the maximal index, unstable critical point. All right, because if it's unstable, you have one dimensional going out, so we have at least one unstable, so not everything can be a stable manifold. All right, so what is happening with unstable? 
sorry, uh, with unstable. Well, unstable manifold does you this on the level set of uh, uh, you can look at this uh, at this picture. This is a zero, an index zero unstable critical point. So before the level set was empty, and afterwards the level set is the level set is a disk with a boundary. Okay, so this is used to be empty, and now it's a disk whose boundary is mm, whose boundary is uh, a sphere on on the mm, on M. So the level set is, mm, and you see, you can see it also from this perspective that if you mm, mm, uh, look only at the boundary, then index zero unstable critical point corresponds to corresponds to an index zero critical point on the boundary. So what's happening is x plus is equal to x minus union disk. And what is the dimension? Well, it's the same dimension as the dimension of the uh, of the level set. So the, the dimension has to be preserved. So you we have this and m plus is equal and this is actually the disjoint union m minus union uh, disjoint with s2. All right. So far so good. We pass to index one stable critical point. What does an index one cri stable critical point do to you? Well, maybe next picture, maybe next page. Three. Index one stable. So we have a stable. Uh, one stable dimension. So the I should use consistently try at least try to use colors consistently. We have stable manifold. So if this is one dimensional stable manifold, then this then the index of the on the boundary should be the same. So should should be zero. So you need to have the picture like that. So on the on the boundary, you still have m plus is equal to m minus union S2. But now what happens to the to X plus? Well, remember this clay picture. That I drew last time. That you have the attaching region for the a uh, right half handle, and then you pass to to that picture. So actually, X plus D three and the D three embedded in interior of x minus. So you can find a, so you have a manifold, which is like a three-dimensional manifold, and then you choose, uh, you find a ball and you remove this ball from the boundary. So you, so that's, that's what's happening to you. And how can you uh, see this on the picture? You can see, you can see this on the picture your previous x plus, so x minus is here, and x plus is, uh, uh, what is x plus? Uh, mm. And x plus is here, all right? So maybe I should use a different color for X plus. 
here. So where is this ball? This is this is this ball that you remove. You remove this ball or you push it into the uh, vertical boundary. So so one uh, index one state with critical points is just removing a ball. So what's what is the picture after this? Uh, after one s is that your x is a union of spheres and like objects like a three dimensional sphere with holes. Okay, because you have your your previous x plus. So x plus and x minus is like changing its meaning from the critical point to the critical point. So the x plus from the zero u becomes x minus from uh, from uh, from one s. So after the index one uh, zero index interior critical points, you have a bunch of s threes. And then you have bunch of, of S threes. You attach a bunch of D threes. So now you have a disconnected sum of components whose uh, some of these components have boundaries, some of these components don't have a boundary. And now you, from these components, you drill out balls. So you end up with objects with a disjoint sum of objects like S three minus some number of balls. This number can be zero if you don't remove a ball. This number can be one if you either start with S3 and remove one ball or start with D3 and don't remove anything, or you can remove balls. Anyway, this is like a combinatorial manifold. You can, uh, there is nothing, mm, mm, if you fix the combinatorics, so the number of balls, then everything is, uh, then everything is uh, essentially, mm, well, unique up to diffeomorphism, regardless of what your manifold is. Okay, so now we pass to the four part, and the four part is one u. And one u is, uh, in a sense, easy because uh, the boundary uh, uh, adding, uh, passing through a, through a through index one critical points is one handle attach attachment. So it's uh, uh, like on the picture that we had before is just this. You specify Okay, it looks like that. And now, from this, it follows that n plus is a minus union bunch of one handles. So you essentially take, so your m minus, your original m minus, your previous m minus was a disjoint sum of two spheres and then you attach one handles. So it's a disjoint sum afterwards. M plus is a disjoint sum of mm, surfaces of different genera and x plus is equal to x minus union and one handle so you have a, like you have a ball that let me give you a picture for that
and you connect it by a solid by a solid pipe so you can get many solid pipes in this well you can imagine if you draw it in s3 you can imagine you because you can draw everything in s3 here you can imagine that you attach that your uh, pipes or your like thickened arcs can be tangled but actually this is a misleading picture because this tangles this is an abstract manifold and not an embed, x is not considered as an embedded, embedded manifold so x plus afterwards the level set is afterwards the level set X plus is a union of so called handle bodies. Mm. So, what is a handle body? Well, you have a surface like genus three, and then you fill it in. So it's like a solid surface. And now there is a, the key. So this is like this, if you think about it, you see that this is everything up to now is standard. So if you know the combinatorics of critical points, then you basically recover your combinatorics i mean where this uh, the only the only data that you need is uh, uh, that uh, mm, what are the genera of these surfaces but if you once you fix that once you know how many surfaces and what are the genera then everything is then everything is standard so everything is unique up to isotopy but now you pass to the key problem and if you understand this 2s case really well you have solved uh, Schoenfries 4 but still you really well is uh, mm, really hard uh, so what is the 2s handle and let me refer come back to that picture the 2s handle is uh, drilling a curve. So on the level set, on the um, from on the point of view of M, if you have a two S handle, well, a two S handle is attached along an arc. So you either add something or you push on the clay model. You just push. Uh, just remove an arc whose boundary from X whose boundary is on M. X plus arises from X minus by removing a finite number. <laughs> Sorry, of arcs whose boundary whose boundaries are on M plus. So we have like one, or maybe I can just copy this picture. Maybe I can enlarge it. And now what is this? We can start. We can have one arc we have we can have another arc going here and over here and we can have a third arc that goes over we can make them pairwise in and non intersecting because they are like stable man correspond to stable manifolds of critical points so they are pairwise non intersecting uh, 
and that's what's happening on, on X. And, on, and what's happening to the boundary of X if you remove an arc? Well, if you add, if you remove an arc, like if you remove the green, or let me just draw a picture, mm. remove a simple arc over here. If you can remove this arc, if, sorry, if you remove this arc, your the boundary the picture will look like like this. But you can convince yourself, like a, a moment of thought, is that this is isotopic to. So this is like this part. Just to increasing the genus and the handle body survives. So how what where is this hole? This hole is just that hole. You like dig in the hole. If you remove a trivial arc, then you dig in the hole. So essentially uh, these arcs can be tangled. They can be linked one against another. So it's not very easy to understand what is going on. If the arcs can, if you can arrange that all the arcs um, uh, bound the disk, like the regular arcs, we think by means they bound, there is a disk embedded in the handle body such that half of the boundary is this disk and the, the other half of the boundary is on the handle body, is on the boundary of the handle body. So here is this picture of, a, of an easy disk. If you can arrange it for all these critical points, then you are in a winning position because you control these two handles, uh, two S handles. If you don't, uh, well, there is a, Mm. If you don't, well, you have no control and it is uh, it's a bit problematic. And we are halfway through. So this is like the hardest part. Uh, understanding two S handles and two U handles, we start to, well, intuitively up until now we were making the manifolds more and more complex. And from now we start to simplify. So. Uh, I know that it's not rigorous what I'm saying. I cannot make it like a mod to saying we start to simplify. Okay. Uh, but actually, why does uh, removing a curve on this end uh, turn this uh, into something isotopic to uh, uh, one more genus donut, let's say, multi donut? Uh, because it's not clear to me. Well, if it is, if you remove any curve, it's not true. If you remove a special curve, if you remove like a straight segment, suppose you have a ball, okay? Start with the simplest case. Suppose you have a ball and you have a curve that is like going through the ball from the top to the bottom, like a single, a straight line. Okay, you remove it with a, with its neighborhood, you get a donut. Right. Okay. So this is like this. If you look at this part, forgetting on what is here, but just look at this part, then this is a ball and this is a straight line. Ah, oh, so I misunderstood the picture. I thought it was some kind of an, an, a circle uh, around, it's circling around the, the, the living on the boundary and circling around. Mm, let's say the the cap, so that we just lose the boundary at a very at the co-dimension something. No, this is, this is like a, this is the picture that is that shows you how things really are. So it's this is like this picture. All right, so you remove, you increase, but in general you can't. So now there are two hand two U handles, and two U handles start simplifying things. So what is a two handle? Uh, uh, not that should be this to you handle. 
Well, the two a two handle is uh, two handles are discs or thickened disc, which are supposed to simplify manifolds. So let me show you an effect of. Um, uh, Attaching a two handle, well, to, for for a U handle, you have to specify a sphere on the boundary first. Okay, so unstable handles, uh, so you specify as sorry, not a disk, a sphere on the boundary, a sphere of dimension uh, two minus one in this case, so a circle. You so you specify a circle on the boundary. You thicken it by the picture, like the S1, the S0 picture is precisely if it's a zero handle, you thicken it on the boundary and then you thicken it halfway into the into the manifold. Okay, so you thicken, take a thickening of the circle, and then you attach a disk, you cap it with a disk. So why I'm saying that uh, it's uh, simplifying because you cap it, because you cap, you decrease the genus. So essentially after you have capped it, what happens is you end up, you decrease the genus. So that's why I'm saying it's morally uh, simplifying. So how can you, do this well, for example, if you have this 2s, you can cap it with a 2u handle and come back to the to the same level set, to the level set who is which is a genus. So uh, mm, two u handles are two u handles are disks. Uh, that decrease the genus, but in order to have a curve, but in order to have a um, mm, okay, so that's that's just adding two handles, and now three handles are also disks. Three s. But three S handles are disks that are embedded in a different way. So you have, a, well, it's not necessarily a handle body anymore. So not every open surface in S uh, caveat. Not every open set of R3. even though it might be it might be a, a finite CW complex has is a handle body. Right? Do you know any examples? Topological examples. This is more like algebraic topology, not more theory, but they are related. You cannot separate the two. Can you find a complicated open subset, open set of R three, which is a finite, which is homotopy equivalent to a finite CW complex, but it's not a handle body? Any ideas? Maybe if, if it had infinitely many holes? Well, yeah, but it's not a finite CW complex if it has okay. infinitely many. Yeah, that's what I, that's why I said, that's why I asked this question. 
if it has infinite. All right, so if you haven't seen that in, it's really hard to cook up because the example is really trivial once you once you have seen it at least once in your lifespan. So take a trefoil or any non-trivial knot basically and define H to be R3 minus a tubular neighborhood of the trefoil. And I claim that it's not a handle body. And the reason is that pi one of a h, well, is not a free group. Okay, this is like a an example that, and if you don't know, if you don't know how to compute the pi one of such of this complement, then there is something that is called Wiertinger presentation and you can discuss uh, find it in Rolfson's book where you basically if uh, something classical is not in Rolfson's book there it's not true uh, all right so if you but suppose we have a situation like a handle body for a simplification and now we specify we need to specify a disk but the way we specify a disk or maybe i can draw it like this we have like a handle body with some disks uh, uh, removed so from the pre previous picture, we removed some disks. Uh, we removed, sorry, we removed some uh, some curves. We added some disks, and now we specify a circ. Well, free as handle is a two handle on the on the boundary. So because it's stable, so if it's stable, then on the boundary it it looks like one dimensional less. So we have to specify. S1 and embedding on S1 and minus, but a stable manifold means that we specify a sphere on the boundary which is capped by a disk. So this is again the clay picture. We have specified a two points and the curve. We specified Mm, this is like one S. We specified here two points and the curve. Uh, it's too much. Uh, yeah, we specified here. We specified a mm, two. We specified two. Mm, no, I'm confused. Okay, let's. Uh, we have to specify a circle and the disk in B4. In, sorry, the disk in X minus. And D2 in X minus. And what we do, we remove this, uh, we remove this uh, disk. Uh, we remove this disk, the tubular neighborhood of these disks, of these disks. So M plus arises, M plus is a surgery on this S1. Mm. Mm. In uh, on this S1, so remove uh, S1 glue back D2 and X minus is just uh, 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 remove S S one cross cross the interval glue two disks to cap it, and but X minus is uh, 
just drilling the disk, just drilling the disk. And here is a here is a question. You specify S1, but you cannot specify it. But for S1, it's not that easy to bound the disk if you have just choose randomly S1 in a minus. There is no reason for it to bound the disk in D2. So if you have a freest handle, then this freest handle, and you know that you can you attach a freest handle that it exists, you know that you have you need to have a spec specific configuration of arcs such that this uh, such that this circle on on the boundary actually bounds a disk. That's why it's simplification. And for example, if you have a drilled curve, the drilled stra st straight curve as on the pink picture a uh, few minutes ago. Then you can all you can of course specify a disk, a circle like here. You remove this disk, and what happens is lo and behold, you uh, you just decrease the genus. You your straight handle increase the genus, and your uh, straight arc increase the genus, and then your trivial disk decreases the genus. So the role of free as handle is decreasing the genus again. And Okay, and now we, pa we pass to few handles. So what is the anatomy of a free handle? Well, it's unstable. Well, it is a three handle on the boundary, sorry, on M. But the dimension of M is free. The dimension of the um, is free. So it's like a top critical point. So what does the top critical point do to you? Well, the top critical points, the top critical points cap takes a sphere and caps it by a mm, mm, by a disk. So it closes the closes M. So M plus is equal to M minus, well, minus S2. Because from the levels that you had, if you, this is free you handles corresponds to maxima, to local maxima on the boundary. So, mm, mm, you have a max, you have a maximum. So what happens below the maximum? Below the maximum, you have a, a two sphere, which is removed which is removed when you pass to the maximum. So you attach a free handle, which are, which is like a, attaching a ball, and this like discards the component of, uh, discards the component of a minus on the, on the level set of um, X. Uh, it is closes X plus closes an S two. So if you have boundary so if you had have something which is on x and the boundary is like s2 then you that's x minus then what you get afterwards is and then there is nothing this is this is closed okay so this is like a, if you don't see what is going on because the dimension is too large then think of that that you change the function to minus function and free you handles course become like three becomes four minus three with one and u becomes s so free you handle is like the reversed one s handle and one s handle was removing a ball from the interior of x so now you glue glue this glue in, glue, up, glue back this ball and four s handles are like negative negatives of 
uh, zero U handles, which is that you have a connected component, which is a ball. So X minus has a connected component, which is a ball and this, and then you discard it. So you attach a handle that closes this connected component and you have no for you handles, you have four handles that deletes all the spheres in uh, X minus. So X minus. So what is what is the philosophy in this this in this discussion? Well, it was like a quick trip to that to that. You start with something trivial. You pass to something relatively simple. So handle bodies. Now you make a mess. The mess is two S handles. And then you clean up the mess by adding two, two U handles, which are like disks. And then from this moment on, essentially, you start simplify and you know that this, this object, this free S object and this free S object has to be a handle body again, because it's like the same as one U object before. So before the free S, you need to have a handle body again. And then you start simplify because if you if you pass to free U, it has to be simple because it, ha it cannot have two complicated components because otherwise you are unable to discard all of them. Because you are, for example, at this moment, you need to have uh, X, which is uh, um, a union of balls and the spheres. So you need to have something simple past, essentially past uh, this stage. So in a sense, you make it makes it complicated and then you simplify it right afterwards. So if you understand how, ba how bad can things be and can, how easy can uh, and what is the way they can become simple, then maybe you can understand it much better. But of course, uh, it's a hard problem. Uh, and I gave it not just not to encourage you to push into it, but more like an example of more theory for manifolds with bounding. So for like better understanding on what's going on and what is the main purpose of this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, of this lecture, uh, sorry, main purpose of what is the purpose of introducing this part. Uh, so let me just now recall you because you can, we discuss like two separate variants of Morse theory, like Morse theory for manifolds with boundary and Morse theory for manifolds for embedded manifolds. So because it was like quite a while, quite a while ago, let me call is recall you is an embedded Morse function if f F restricted to M is Morse and F and M is disjoint of, from the set of critical points of F. And Xi is an embedded gradient like vector field. Uh, if t psi f is greater or equal zero with obvious common, with obvious conditions, psi is tangent to, to m and psi has local behavior, which is minus one x minus xh, xh plus one xn sum y i square zero zero. So that is like for uh, recollection. And what is the connection between Morse theory for embedded uh, uh, embedded Morse theory, Morse theory for manifolds with boundary? And I'm not asking for like uh, personal mm, connections of people who naming people uh, that works 
that work in both for both uh, in both theories. Uh, um, there is an application of this machinery for understanding the following question. Question. Like we have suppose we have a handle decomposition for M and Omega. So handle decomposition means that you can present a manifold by handles like a Morse function on M and a Morse function on Omega. Can we hook up a handle decomposition of the complement? or omega minus a neighborhood of M. If we like thicken the neighborhood, well, homotopically it's the same, so the handle decomposition should be the same. Or, and the answer is yes. And it's called the rising water principle. I will tell you why, why it's that, where the name comes from. Well, suppose you have a A submanifold M, and you have your omega is the ambient manifold, so omega is everything else, and you think that the omega is a basin of water, you increase the level set of water, and now you see that this water starts like flowing along this M. So every critical point of M, well, and critical point of M corresponds to a handle by Morse theory, an index, an index H handle for M corresponds to an index. Well, what is the index here? Let's see. Well, of course, it's uh, I, I can write down your idea, but uh, you but let's get the idea of what's going on. So we have we drill it, okay? So before we hit this level set, omega is just a product, and then omega become is still a product until the water closes on the over this critical point, and then we have a circle. So it's like index one addition. So it's like an index one handle, okay? So we, because we have a, we have M, we the water closes above the above the critical point. So the so M is here, water closes. So H plus D minus one, uh, sorry, K minus one. We should use this notation, where K is the co-dimension of M in omega uh, in omega. So again, the statement is what is true in the mm, mm, what is true on the picture is uh, is the, what is in the picture is reality. So if your water closes over mm, the second critical point, then it is uh, mm, mm, then it is uh, mm, addition of a two handle to the uh, to the complement. So this is like the this is like the, the principle. You can find it in I think section I don't remember six six one or six two of GOMP slip sheets of GOMP slip sheet book. Uh, and uh, 
but uh, you can also uh, mm, but you can also ask yourself whether you can give a well and it's proved in golf scriptures like uh, there is, the proof is sketched and once you know this uh, well geometrically you can say uh, you can give a proof by some hand waving mm. Or writing down topological proof, but the question is, can you give a more theoretical proof? And now, uh, what I'm going to tell you is, uh, well, it's not yet published, but it is uh, a more uh, theoretical proof of the rising water principle. So, just a more theoretical proof of rising. Of the rising water principle, which basically boils down to the following: you start with a manifold, uh, you start with the manifold M and omega. You look at this omega minus the neighborhood of M, and you consider the considered because you drill out the, the neighborhood of M, you get a uh, mm, you get a manifold with boundary. And once you've got a manifold with boundary, uh, then you che check whether you can find the Morse function a manifold with boundary coming from a Morse from an embedded Morse function. So the Morse theoretical proof of the, of the rising water principle is idea start with a Morse function on M omega as an embedded Morse function. And then a proof uh, construct Construct a Morse a function for a manifold with boundary omega minus nu of m. Okay, so that's the idea, and well, the remark. The proof works for immersed manifolds as well, with one serious technical problem. Okay, I have to spare battery for the uh, for the pencil I uh, left it uh, in the office yesterday and didn't charge before the lecture uh, all right so what is the um, uh, it works for the immersed case and uh, immersed more theory is something that I don't discuss during the lecture because it's uh, Mm, almost as uh, almost the same as the embedded Morse theory, but the bookkeeping of indices is uh, terrible. So that's like the main problem. But in the rising water principle, there happened to be uh, one more technical issue that I will mention in a moment. So proof. Now it's like a sketch and not an idea. So we have M inside of, inside of omega, F from omega to R, an embedded Morse function, and Xi gradient-like vector field. So now the key point is choose rho from omega to R, the function, that is 
square to the square the dis square of the distance to m and well uh, there is uh, we will assume that well for square of the distance if you say distance you need you immediately think of a metric that you need to have a metric to get a, have a distance so we assume that we have a Riemannian metric on, on omega and now this metric eventually we will assume that it's compatible with Morse coordinates so whenever we have Morse coordinates on for a critical point then we assume that this metric is uh, that these coordinates are also normal okay so that's the, the one thing and that is essentially the key point of the key problem with uh, immersed Morse theory. So if you have a, an immersed Morse theory, then having a function that is square the distance to the boundary, if you have like, a, uh, if you have like a um, crossing, then it is, uh, it is a much more tricky to get, to have a good, uh, to construct a good function row with Proper analytical proper analytic properties. So this is like, like the key technical question in for immersed case, but we don't discuss immersed case. Anymore. Uh, yeah. What? How do we? Uh, what's actual? What actually is the difference that we mean between embedded and immersed? Because I thought that both immersed are means, uh, embedding means uh, it's one to one, and the derivative is of maximal rank. And immersed means the derivative. Uh, immersed means uh, the derivative is of maximal rank, and uh, regularly immersed is that the branches are mm, mm, branches are transverse. So let's see. Embedded means like this. Immersed means like that. And regularly immersed means like this. And for example, this is not embedded because the derivative, the uh, the derivative of the map from m to omega at this point has uh, has a kernel. Okay, is it clear? Immersion means you can have singular. You can, you can have immersion means you can have double points or. But Basically, while doing, dealing with immersed things, you no longer deal with the manifold. Well, yeah, you don't know, you no longer deal with manifolds. You need, we deal with something uh, much uh, more, a little bit more complex. Uh, this, was, this was confusing because uh, on our faculty, we often say, uh, which is literally immersed manifolds for the submanifolds of Rn. Uh, zanurzone means zanurzone translates into embedded, embedded, and in Polish włożone means immersed. Ah, okay. That's uh, that's the terminology. I don't know Polish terminology. My Polish mathematical language is uh, much worse than my English, especially with respect to the vocabulary. Mm -hmm. Maybe not grammar, but vocabulary. Yeah, I said. <laughs> I just said that immersed is literally the same as uh, zanurzony, but uh, th there is a mismatch. Okay, never mind. No, 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 no. Immersed, uh, well, yeah, literally immersed means uh, uh, zanurzony, but uh, for, but uh, mathematically immersed means włożony. Uh, I don't know, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> don't try to take it. Don't write papers in Polish, and uh, I actually don't quite approve people who build their career on writing math papers in Polish. Um, mm, mm. All right, so uh, oh, this should be off record. Uh, all right, so uh, uh, okay, rho is a function that is square to the distance to m, and now we choose a cutoff function phi, a cutoff. Function and phi is. Uh, we tell you the graph of the function. Takes value two at zero. Takes value. Uh, 
one at one with non-vanishing derivative and then zero. And this non-vanishing derivative will be needed to have like the stand the uh, linear part to the boundary should be mm, 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 uh, this linear part should be uh, mm, mm, sorry Blah. Mm. Mm. Uh, yes so that the, the boundary more function will be correct with that if this uh, if this is satisfied and then for two or more it's zero okay it's 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 everywhere zero, and we choose uh, we choose delta to be very small number adjusted later. And well, the idea is you choose n delta to be the set of x in omega such that Mm, the distance of x is less or less than delta. Omega delta is, well, the complement, so omega minus and delta. So essentially what you do, you, your n delta is a tubular neighborhood and you remove this tubular neighborhood and the boundary of n. And you want to construct a function on aim, construct a function, and actually a vector field on omega delta minus n delta. Sorry, on omega delta. as a manifold with boundary. Okay, so just cost, cost, construct, a fu construct a function. Actually, we start with constructing the vector field and constructing the vector field is easy uh, because uh, you just uh, use, uh, maybe I should lift that path. I will give you the formula for Xi is equal to Xi or sorry, Xi at W. So it's on the proposal is equal to Xi of W minus Phi of Rho of W divided by Delta. And now you do something as a Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization where gradient is the gradient of the uh, distance function. So rho is the distance function. And now what happens if this is one? Okay, so this is like a mysterious formula, quite a mysterious formula. But what happens if this, is, if this guy is one? If this guy is one, then this is like removing from psi the component that is orthogonal to um, uh, um, that is orthogonal to um, um, it's, that is parallel to, to, to rho. So this guy, if phi is equal to one, this guy is orthogonal to the gradient. That's like pure linear algebra. That's Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization. All right. So what does it mean that it's orthogonal? Uh, then it means that psi tilde, if phi is equal to one, is tangent to the level set. So this means that psi tilde is tangent to the level set phi, where this guy, uh, to the tangent to the level set of rho, once rho of w divided by delta is equal to one, which essentially means 
psi tilde is tangent to to the level set rho equal to delta. Is it clear? This is like a like an obvious observation. You have psi tilde is tangent to to this guy. To psi tilde is orthogonal to the gradient of rho once this guy is equal to one. So that means that boils via this property that is orthogonal once it's rho, del, rho of w divided by delta is one, which means rho of w is equal, rho is equal, equal to delta. So this is the boundary of omega of omega delta. It's precisely the boundary. Okay, so far so good. We have constructed it. Well, there is one tiny little thing that this is well defined on omega. It's not well defined on on n itself. Well, because uh, this is zero. Okay, the square distance is zero on the on the manifold, but we don't care because we care only on what's happening on omega delta. And so that's that's the definition. And now we start working, and this is like. A, if we write everything in local coordinates, this is like a problem from calculus two, like multivariable calculus, but it's really not hard. We will do it next week. Uh, that the calculus, that the critical points of psi tilde can be expressed via critical points of psi. And there will be one advantage for the more theoretical part Namely, each critical point of psi will correspond to two critical points of psi tilde here and here. So on the picture, it's we have a critical point, we have two old critical points, we will have new two new critical points. One is boundary stable and the other is boundary unstable. So you see this is like easy because this is this vector field will flow like this. So this is like boundary stable and this is like boundary unstable critical point. These directions like that are tangent to the sphere, to this, uh, to this like normal bundle, will correspond to the increment of the, uh, of the rising of the K of K minus one in the rising water principle. This is like basically the dimension of the sphere, of the sphere bundle. So we see it. And we see two critical points, but one is boundary stable and one is boundary unstable. And we know that boundary stable critical points do not affect the topology of the whole manifold, so of omega delta, and they don't contribute to the don't contribute to the handle decomposition. Only on, only the the unstable critical points, so this will contribute to the mm, uh, to the decomposition. So you don't see this stable critical point in the standard rising water principle, but for more theoretical rising water principle, you see this critical point that doesn't do anything or almost anything. And this critical point does a lot. So this is like the, for the next time. And uh, maybe I can show some mm, applications for that and uh, do some simple analysis in local coordinates. Okay, let me stop recording.